in the post-recession world, everybody's been talking about consolidation in the mining industry and of course there was news that made headlines over the last year the proposed uh, joining together of BHP and Rio yeah. and there are questions as to what the landscape will look like in 2011. I think we'll see more consolidation particularly in the mid-tier market of uh, the sector. Um, I think they, some companies are looking to move from single asset companies to multi-asset companies so they can diversify their risk yeah. um, so and hopefully also uh, take advantage of the strong commodity prices and get significant output to market as quick as possible. What does the environment look like in, in Australia by way of consolidation because you know in South Africa we've got uh, overbearing regulation about local equity, BEE and so what that's led to is sprouting of junior miners operating in the same space as well established big mining giants. There has been a, a lot of juniors coming onto the boards again, particularly in the last six months in Australia. Um, and the larger companies are looking at them as opportunities as they discover assets. Um, there is regulation in Australia also with regard to foreign investment. Um, we've seen a lot from China, which I understand Africa is seeing a lot of uh, investment from China. So mm. that has to be have government approval. So that sometimes gets the, the nod and sometimes doesn't, right. depending on the national interest. But Consolidation is definitely on the cards and um, there's a lot of M&A act activity in the markets in Australia and even with Australian companies with interest in Africa too. Obviously Australia has been affected by issues around the mining tax which has been uh, a really thorny issue for mining houses and for the government. Um, initially the proposal was 40%, the Prime Minister's revised it down to about 30% but there's still a sense that there isn't certainty on this issue. There's a lot of uncertainty about the proposed mining tax. Um, the, the government brought out or new guidelines pre-Christmas. Um, currently it is only in relation to the, the bulk metals in iron ore and coal, but there is a, a strong sort of belief out there that it could be spread to the precious metals and it's, it is of a big concern in Australia, um, which is why companies are looking to Africa um, mm. as a place where that potential tax isn't currently in place and as opportunities. What's the government's rationale for the mining tax? Oh, they're doing it more on just it's the national wealth that's been eroded so mm -hmm. um, and they're deeming it they're making super profits out of this. Um, the one concern is they're just focusing on one sector of the industry and not the whole economy um, and trying to use them to fund the rest of the economy. The mining tax issue may not really be a South African issue but the whole principle of preserving the national wealth and making sure that we retain the benefits is a conversation in South Africa. It's become a bit radicalized with nationalization being debated by sections of the ruling party, uh, windfall taxes being reviewed in countries like Zambia but it's, it's a really thorny and sore issue. Not really, it shouldn't be. Um, we cannot have a national asset being appropriated by a few so theoretically uh, it's really saying that you know the people the owners of the underground um, mineral uh, who are the people who give it away to private sector because private sector mm -hmm. can can mine it and do it better than than the public therefore they need to participate when there's windfall uh, returns and for me it makes sense uh, we cannot have societies where uh, people rip those society and take away uh, what is a finite asset um, and get richer on, on, on that asset so therefore there is a case for infall tax what is not clear I think what we need to be debating for those that are commodity and out is to the extent of how much that windfall tax is because we shouldn't discourage those private investors to put money uh, to exploit those resources. So for me the quantum but I think the rationale for it uh, in development does make sense. And another issue I don't know whether you want to add to that Peter is the so-called future fund that's being spoken about by the Australian government just in terms of how they would manage and utilize some of these windfall taxes? I think that's still to be decided. Um, they're looking to reinvest it into in infrastructure, um, particularly in northern, northeast Australia and northwest Australia, where a lot of this wealth has been generated, so they yes. can continue to get the resources out of the ground as quickly and as efficiently as possible to continue this right. boom and uh, hopefully reap the benefits from right. it. Now, before you came here, we would see very dramatic pictures mm. of the floods in Australia, fires prior to that 
very erratic weather conditions. How has that affected the, the, the mining industry, particularly open cast mining? Yeah, the, the coal industry within Queensland has taken a pretty big hit um, with the floods. Uh, obviously, a lot of dewatering has to go out of the coal mines, so obviously production has been suspended. Um, even when they dewater, there's still issues with rail infrastructure and port infrastructure, which has been damaged as a result of this, so there will be a delay from that. And obviously, in the last 24 to 48 hours, we've had Cyclone Yahtzee coming through um, and that, not knowing whether that will, but I think it will yeah. descend into a rain-bearing depression and that will cause another lot of... Uh, heavy rainfall in the area which will potentially cause more problems. Let's talk about Australian investment in African mining opportunities. I know the Australians are very active in economies like yeah. the Democratic Republic of Congo, exploration sites for iron ore as far as Guinea and uh, Mali. What's the approach and the strategy? I think they, the Australians like getting outside of the country and uh, really having a go and try and find big resource assets. They've been uh, pretty active in Africa in particular I think for the last four or five six years mm -hmm. um, and they've had great success which is just leading the way for another wave of investment into Africa and particularly with some uncertainty in Australia they, yeah. they see it as an attractive place. Lumkila, your views on Australian investments in African mining, I mean we've also heard of new projects like a copper plant in northern Botswana funded by the mm. Australians. Well it's fantastic because they start with prospecting and they list these companies in the Australian Stock Exchange, uh, which then mobilise funding for them to invest in the rest of the continent. We've seen also uh, companies like River State, who are very active in Mozambique, mm -hmm. uh, in the Tete Zambezi area, exploiting coking coal. So it's very encouraging for us because they bring money. But also Australians uh, have got values which are very similar to us as Anglo-Saxon people. Therefore, it's a wonderful investor compared to the other, the new ones, specifically China here, who bring in different values systems and therefore quite a challenge for us to have mm. uh, the Chinese as well as the Anglo-Saxon cultures in exploiting those resources. What are those cultures? Well the culture here is using uh, um, uh, labor, some of which is allegedly taken out of prisons and living in the most squalid conditions uh, that in South Africa we saw in the uh, turning of the previous century mm. and therefore we cannot treat humans that way. We want that decency, that human right to be respected. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, when exploiting a resource in our country, we want our people to be employed in that mm -hmm. company and they bring their own labor. Uh, so, the, so the Australians... So the Australians, they run a business the way that would like to have them as partners. Okay, we're talking about mineral exploration here, but it seems a lot of other international players are very interested in the oil and gas space in Africa, all to do with energy security issues. Uh, how does uh, Australia classify their involvement? Because like I said, we see a lot of them in the mineral space. There is definitely a lot in the mineral space, but there we are seeing um, probably renewed interest in Africa within the oil and gas, um, both on and offshore, um, and I think it will only increase over the coming years. And of course, uh, a boom in commodity prices recently. Um, some of it has to do with risk um, and safe haven buying, but a lot has to do with, you know, buoyant views about global recovery. Where do you see commodities going? I think commodities will still be driven a lot out of China and their demand and potentially India as well. Um, I think there's no signs at the moment that that's going to stop. I think commodities are still going to be strong um, and with that uh, I think there'll be, the funds will be there to exploit it.